This is my Lamberto Bava collection. Of course, he's the Italian director best known as Mario Bava's son. He, of course, was his father's protege and a protege of Dario Argento. And um, after uh, directing second unit on a number of his father's films like Shock and even some Dario Argento films like Tenembre, um, he finally broke out and directed his own film with the, uh, the theatrical film Macabre also known as Frozen Terror, starring uh, Bernice uh, uh, Staggers, I believe that's how you pronounce her last name. Um, you may recognize her from the cult uh, gross-out science fiction film, Extro. And this is one uh, fucked-up Italian horror film. Uh, she's a, a woman uh, who's cheating on her husband, and while with her lover, he gets decapitated in a, in a, a car, and... And so she has this really bizarre relationship with her daughter. And anyway, she has this freezer um, in her room that she keeps a hidden secret in. And um, it doesn't take much thought to figure out what she keeps in the freezer, but it has a really silly, over-the-top ending. I, I re <laughs> that's a really interesting Italian horror film. And Lamberto followed that up with a made-for-TV uh, giallo called A Blade in the Dark. Second, uh, it's actually the first film in this double feature. Um, for a made-for-TV Jallo, it's not too bad. Um, it does have TV movie limitations, um, but I didn't think it was too bad. It was very watchable. Um, uh, not much to say about that one otherwise. <sighs> then, of course, in 1985, Dario Argento produced his most well-known film, Lamberto Bava directed Demons, one of my all-time favorite Italian horror movies. It, it's very illogical, but then again, Italian films are style over substance, but it's so goddamn much fun. People go to a theater, become trapped in there, and a person turns into this demon and starts spreading her contagion through her fingernails, and everyone's turning into demons, and overly gory, amazing practical effects, great heavy metal soundtrack, and an ending that's amazing, just over the top. I love that movie so much. That's just... If you look up horror entertainment, that movie is under that fucking definition. Uh, then he returned, of course, with the obligatory Demons 2. Uh, Demons 2, um, it's not as good as Demons, but for a gory Italian sequel, it's entertaining. This time it's an apartment complex as opposed to a thea theater. This one's even more illogical. I mean, a demon comes out of a TV and infects a girl, and then she spreads her contagion throughout the rest of the apartment. Number Baba puts all sorts of crazy shit in this one, including a pregnant woman fighting a demon baby. <laughs> I mean, I, this is, uh, it, it's entertaining. The editing's really bad in Demons, too. It looks like it's uh, edited by some uh, psychotic butcher, but um, an entertaining sequel, nonetheless. And then, of course, there's a, <laughs> a long story with uh, a number of films known as Demons 3, but I'll get into that later. Uh... In the late 80s, uh, Italian film industry began to falter, and uh, Lamberto Bava jumped to television, and there was a cable television series called Bravito Giallo, and he directed four full-length films for that series. And the first film he directed for that series is Graveyard Disturbance, and uh, he wanted to make two of the films with more of a comical approach and two of the films with a serious approach, and this is, uh, has more comical. Out of all four films he made for that cable series, this is the weakest. It's got some interesting atmosphere, a group of kids take a dare and go into this uh, labyrinth underneath a cemetery. There's some creepy stuff going on, but again, very illogical, and there's no body count, so hardcore fans of Italian horror that like them bloody and a lot of... A lot of bodies are going to be sorely disappointed with that one. Second film he directed for that series is Until Death, uh, released in Great Britain as uh, The Changeling 2, uh, The Revenge, and uh, a supposed quote unquote sequel to the Peter Medic Haunted House film. Is it? Of course not. But you know what? This has actually surprised me how good it was. Um, it's kind of like uh, the po uh, a horror version of The Postman Rings Twice. Uh, uh, a woman plots with her lover to kill her husband, and uh, her and her lover start a restaurant, and years later, uh, this uh, interesting drifter comes to the door, and it seems to be her, like, her husband just in a different body, and I thought it was quite interesting for a made-for-TV movie, and re um, really enjoyed that. Um, the English audio track 
on the my communication DVD has a lot of damage and it's really annoying with the pops, the rhythmic pops. Um, the Italian audio track is flawless, of course, but their uh, my communication did not provide us with any English subtitles. So unless you can speak Italian, you're out of luck there. The third film he directed for uh, that series is The Ogre, or according to the DVD box title from Shriek Show, Demons 3, The Ogre. Is it Demons 3? Oh, hell no. They just threw that on there to sell a few more copies. It also got released with the box title Demons 3, The Ogre in Great Britain and, and Australia. It has nothing to do with Demons 1 and 2. Um, and people will usually crap on this movie because of it. It's not like Demons 1 or 2. Well, it's what not supposed to be. It's just the ogre. And actually, I really like the story to this horror film. It, uh, an, an author has these horrible dreams of an ogre, and when she becomes a horror author as an adult, she visits the castle and finds out the ogre is all too real. I thought it was a lot of good, creepy atmosphere and a wonderful score. I really enjoy the score in this movie. For a made-for-TV Italian horror film, I thought this was pretty damn good. And you just have to ignore the Demons 3 in the title. Of course, this is one of three films known as Demon 3. Dario Argento produced a film uh, that ended up being called, that started out as Demon 3, but got retitled The Church. And of course, uh, Umberto Lenzi directed a film called Black Demons that was released in Italy as, De as Demon I 3, so this is one of the three. The fourth and final film that he directed for the series was Dinner with the Vampire, and this is another more comical one and a far better film than Graveyard Disturbance. George Hilton plays the vampire. He invites a group. Of, he's a and and he's a filmmaker, and he invites a group of actors to his house. And he wants to die, so he challenges them all to kill him. But also, he's in, he's going to drink their blood otherwise. So, I I found this film really enjoyable, and uh, I I really dug the humor in this one. So this is definitely a, an interesting uh, obscure film to, from M. Lamberto Bava's uh, filmography. Then I, he went back to theatrical films and directed a giallo called Delirium. And Dario Gento was originally slated to direct this, but uh, Lamberto Baba ended up taking over. This is a, a, a silly, uh, uh, bizarre 80s giallo. It's, uh, it's very trashy. It's got a lot of the 80s style to it, I dig. Compared to seven, the giallos from the 60s and 70s, this isn't near as good, but... Uh, there's some really crazy shit in this. Like, the killer in this sees flaws in all of his victims. Like, one he sees as a giant bee, and so he kills her with the hornet's nest, and then another one he sees as a giant eyeball, and it's really fucked up that way, but, you know, for a trashy 80s gel, I enjoyed it, and I can't, I'll admit it. Um, that's it for my Lamberto Bava collection. Uh, uh, he's definitely got a different style from his father. He didn't want to fall exactly in his footsteps. And he does have a unique style of his own when it comes to even humor in his films. So, but that's my Lamberto Bava collection.